We are now reading the last little bit of our book, uh, chapter 44 of The Cage. Riva, it is good to see you. The girls at Barrack 2 greet me with open arms. It was so depressing to look at your empty bunk. Tola hugs me closer to her, like a mother welcoming her long-lost child. We missed you. Where did they take you today? <coughs> Sorry. We looked for you. My heart stopped beating when they ordered you to remain standing alone in the field. Carola puts her arms around me. It is good to have you back, Riva. I share the details of my day with my 50 roommates and crawl into my old bunk. It feels strange being back here. The wood from the bunk above me looks as if it will fall down on my head any moment. In the sick room, I had no bunk above or below me. The doctor and the camp elder come to check on me. I was so worried about you, Riva, the doctor says. I did not know what they were planning to do. The commandant is very unpredictable. I'm glad you're all right, she smiles. Remember, you are still my patient. After work, come have me look at you. I lie on the straw, thinking about the Nazi commandant. How can she act human to one person and be such an ugly beast to others? I wish she would be more human to all. But wishing does not make it so. The whip continues to fall on the girl's back. Cursed, beaten, we march daily to the factory and back to the cage, urged on by the angry guards. The snow-covered roads make the long march even harder. The canvas on my shoe is coming off. The wooden bottoms allow the snow to glide freely in my shoes. Katia looks at my half-frozen feet with pity and anger. She massages my frozen toes and ties my shoes together with old bandages to hold them on my feet. She curses under her breath, Nazi murderers. Some days Katia brings warm mashed potatoes, cooked vegetables, or bread hidden in her coat pockets. Eat, child, eat. She watches with pleasure as I swallow the food quickly. She knows it will mean trouble for her if I am caught, but she still takes the chance. How long has it been since you had a warm bath? She stands in the doorway of the bathroom, watching me scrub the tub a German woman had just used. How long, Riva, dear? How long? I am trying hard to remember. It has been so long. I'm not sure, Katya. In the ghetto, we had hardly enough wood to keep warm. Once a week, we warmed up some water, put it in a basin, and my brothers and I would wash in it. My voice breaks. I see the gentle young faces before me. I hear them urging me. You go first, Riva. Girls need warm water for their hair. Girls must look pretty even in the ghetto. She waits, silently watching as I wipe the tears from my face. I swallow hard. In the camps, Katya, we use cold water in a basin and then wash our underwear and dress in the same water. A warm bath? I forget what it is like. She moves quickly towards the bathtub, opens the faucet, and begins to fill the tub. Now, then, it is time for you to have a warm bath. I will stand guard outside. She leaves the room, leaving me standing in a daze. Nervously, I slip out of my clothes and slide slowly into the warm water, too frightened to enjoy the luxurious gift. I must wash up quickly before someone comes and finds me here. If they should catch me in the bathtub, Katia will be in a lot of trouble, and I, I will surely be punished. Katia knocks softly on the door. I hold my breath. It is all right, Riva. No one is coming. I want to remind you to wash your hair, too. I take a deep breath. I am still safe. I dip my head into the warm water. What delight. How wonderful it feels to wash my hair in warm water. How much we take for granted. I hurry out of the tub. I must not get Katia into trouble. Smiling, I stand before Katia with a towel around my wet hair. Her face glows with joy. We did it, Riva. You look so fresh, so clean, so new. We will do this again. There is a note of mischief and defiance in her voice. We will do it again. I smile as I rub my wet hair with the towel. Thank you, dear Katya. I am... I stop, frozen with fear, staring straight at me from the front entrance as a Nazi guard. Her eyes flash angrily. What is going on here? What is the meaning of this, doctor? The meaning of what, Madame Overseer? Katya's voice is calm and strong. Sorry, I had to pause. I'm going to start that over again. Why is this prisoner wearing a towel? She walks over and pulls the towel from my head. Why is her hair wet, doctor? Katya remains calm. This girl slipped in the tub while cleaning. She got all wet. Well, she has to dry off, Madame Overseer. She slipped? Ha! The guard keeps her cold gaze on the doctor's face. Yes, Madame Overseer, Katya replies. Well, 
See to it that it, do that it does not happen again. The guard turns to me. Don't be such a clumsy oaf. She walks out, the sound of her boots echoing loudly in the silence of the room. We will do it again, Katya whispers softly. We will do it again. Daily, Katya brings the latest news, which I eagerly await. They are doing badly, Riva. They are taking a beating on all fronts. Soon it will be over, you'll see. There is joy and sadness in her voice. My people, the Russians, are coming closer, but I cannot be here when they come. To them I am a traitor. No, Katya, dear, you are not a traitor. You left your family, your home, to be with your husband. They cannot punish you for that. She smiles sadly. I wish you were right. I don't even know where my husband is. I will search for him, but I will never go home again. They will not forgive me. I feel so sorry for Katya. What a terrible price to pay for loving her husband. Never to see her family again. Tears fill my eyes. Family, where is mine? Will I ever find them? Katya hugs me close, wiping the tears from my face. Chapter 45 Out! Out! Everyone out! The guards run from barrack to barrack, banging on the doors with their clubs. Line up! Quickly! Quickly! We jump out from the bunks. It is still too early for work. We dress quickly, asking one another, what are they up to now? The door opens. The camp elder, pale and nervous, stands in the doorway. Her eyes are red and frightened. Girls, take your belongings. They are moving us. Where are we going? What are they going to do with us? What did they tell you? I do not know, girls. I do not know what they are going to do. Hurry. They are all in an uproar. Something is happening. Girls, please hurry. Let's not give them any reason for punishment. Since when do they need a reason? One of the girls calls boldly. Helen lowers her head. No, they do not need a reason. But if we follow their orders, maybe... She turns and walks out. I take my notebook of my poems. My friend, my only belonging. I put it inside my blouse, close to me. I must protect it. We line up. The commandant walks into the camp her whip swishing loudly as she stops in front of us. Well, ladies, she says, I saw your joy when you heard the bombs. Yes, we have some problems at the moment, but I assure you, ladies, no matter how badly things go for us, you will never live to be freed. She stops, studying the effect of her words. Before we die, one minute before we die, you will die first. We gasp with horror. From the open gates, trucks enters the camp. The commandant waits for the trucks to line up. Now, my dear ladies, I am sure the next time you hear bombs, you will remember my message. And in case you did not hear me, I repeat, you will not live to be freed. She turns to the guards. Put them on the trucks. Take them to the other camps. 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 The word penetrates my numbness. Camps. We are being sent to several different places. Separated. Corolla. I swallow the lump in my throat. Corolla, let's stay together. No matter what, let's stay together. I look at my friend, and I hear her mother's voice as we enter the cattle cars. Stay together, children. Stay together, children. Carola presses my hand in silent agreement. Tola is in the line in front of us. I bend towards her. Stay with us. Stay with us. She nods her head, her eyes fixed on the trucks. Forward march. First two rows forward into the wagons. The girls in the front row move forward and climb into the waiting wagons. Be strong, my friends, one of the girls calls. The sound of the whip hisses through the air and falls on her head. She curls up in pain. The truck moves out. Next two rows, forward, march. Tola's row moves forward. Carol and I move quickly into her group. We must stay together. The guard counts heads as the truck are loaded with their human cargo. Tola climbs into the truck. I move forward. Stop, you idiot, the guard calls, pushing me back. Next truck, this truck is full. Panic grips me. They are separating us. I move towards the truck when the guard turns her eyes. She grabs me suddenly, twisting my head toward her. I told you, next truck, you cow. She pushes me away. Carola holds me up and helps me into the next truck. Riva, are you all right? Did she hurt you? She whispers. Carola, they are separating us again. First they took Mama, then your mother. Our brothers, now our friend. I put my head on Carola's shoulder. She puts her arm around me. The truck moves forwards, rushing, carrying us to the unknown. We search frantically for clues to our destination. From the back of the truck comes a mournful lament of a girl who was separated from her sister. Where are you, sister dear? Where are you? Along the road, we see pretty, well-kept houses, people going about their daily routines. Some glance at the famished, 
horrified passengers of the trucks and turn their heads. Others ignore us. My heart pounds when I see the barbed wire of our new cage. What is waiting for us behind that wire, I wonder? What do the people in their cozy little homes on this road feel? They see trucks arriving. They see the human cargo. They must know what goes on behind that fence. Don't they care? The gates open. Before us, many barracks are spread about a large field. The truck stops in front of a, lar a long, narrow barrack. Everyone out. I look for smoke, for chimneys. The sky is clear. I take a deep breath. The air is clean. No smoke. The guards raise their arms in Nazi salute as a young man in a brown Nazi uniform approaches our group. We stand frozen in place. He returns their salute while his cold, hard eyes move quickly over his new shipment. So this is my new labor force? These dried up bones? He swishes his whip angrily. You are here to dig trenches. If you are lazy or sick, he cracks his whip and walks off. The guard orders us into the barrack, our new home. Rows and rows of wooden bunks reach to the ceiling. Eyes, wretched, dejected, stare at new victims, searching for a familiar face. Reva! Reva, thank God! A shout of joy and bony arms encircle my shaking body and keep me from falling. Tola's soft, brown eyes look at me in disbelief. I thought we would never see each other again. Thank God we are still together. I don't know where the others were sent. This camp is Greifenort. In German, it means a place for nobles. She touches my face gently. We are nobles, in broken body, but still alive, and we are still together. Chapter 46 Knee deep in mud, I dig the shovel into the earth, lift the heavy load, and throw dirt over the side. The guards, their rifles pointed at us, urge us on with shouts and curses. Faster, move, move, cursed Jew. What irony. The Nazi victims digging ditches for the Nazis so they can resist our liberators. I wonder how many people will die here. How many of my friends will find their graves here? The first signs of spring are in the air. Life is renewing itself. Birds sing. Early spring flowers bloom while death is staring at us. I see the ditches flowing with young blood. I put the shovel deep into the ground in silent protest, ignoring the guard above me. Are you crazy? Why are you staring at me with your crazy eyes? He asks, and he lowers the rifle on my head. You are crazy. I hear the screams around me as I slip into the soft mud. What do you think you are doing, Riva? One of the girls helps me up, wiping my face with her coat. We are all alone here, Riva, all alone, forgotten by the world, at the mercy of murderers. I swallow my tears and dig again. The sound of bombs far away bring hope and fear. The bombs do not mean liberation, the guards remind us daily. The day before we die, all of you will die first. The bombs do not mean the, mean the end of Germany. They mean the end of the Jews. Their rifle butts dance over our shoulders. The end is coming for you, Jews. I hear Mama's voice. As long as there is life, there is hope. As long as there is life. My arms ache. Sweat pours from my face as I lift the heavy dirt. You are digging your own grave, I mumble softly slowly your own grave as long as there is life there is hope 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 Carola's voice brings me back to reality Riva do you know what date it is I stare at her what difference does it make for us each day is the same she smiles sadly Riva it is May 3rd 1945 your birthday she so th she throws a kiss in my direction it is your birthday and look where you celebrate your birthday in a ditch Maybe next year, if we survive, we must survive, Carola. We must survive. I raise my voice. We must hope. As long as there is life, there is hope. The guard, his face covered with a sarcastic smirk, pokes me with his rifle butt. This is your last birthday, Jew. By next year, you will all be dead.